Lesson is this? Yes. Okay, today is October 20th. We are going over lesson 4-2, proving triangles congruent. There are three ways in this section that we can prove triangles congruent. There's more than three, but today we're just going to focus on three. The first one is the side, side, side postulate. We're going to be working with lots of proofs. And when you use this as a reason, all you have to put is SSS. You don't have to put the word postulate. What it says is if three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. No, it's not the same triangle. As you see at the bottom, we have two completely different triangles, triangle ABC and triangle XYZ. That does not mean that both of them have to be equilateral. What it means is if you can pair up equal sides in the two triangles, like you can see, segment AC equals segment XZ. Segment AB is equal to segment XY. And the length of segment BC is equal to the length of segment YZ. So three sides of one are congruent to three sides of the other. Therefore, the triangles are congruent. And the order of the letters that I have them written in at the bottom, notice AB in the first and second location is congruent to x, y. So x, y goes in the first and the second location when you list out the letters. Okay? Remember in doing proofs, the order of those letters is ultra important. Yes, Josh? So what if you have two equilateral triangles and every single side is congruent to every single other side? So it's like then angle, they would be congruent to each other. So you could say angle A is congruent to angle Y. Right, like exactly. But look, this is the thing. All we've stated here is that three sides of one are equal to three sides of the other. Well, if these two triangles are congruent, then the corresponding angles are also congruent. Okay? So knowing that the triangles are congruent, I also know that angle X is equal to angle A. And angle B is equal or congruent to angle Y. And angle Z is congruent to angle C. Because remember, if the shapes are congruent, then all corresponding parts are congruent. Okay? But the first way is the side, side, side postulate. Could you move it up and the second one is the side angle side postulate. S A S. This one states that if two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of another, then the triangles are congruent. The included angle is the angle found between the two sides that are marked congruent. So for instance, if this side was marked congruent to this side, and this was marked congruent to this, let's call this triangle M, N, O, and this one triangle S, T, you. According to this, it says that the angle located between the two sides has to be equal to the angle between the two sides. So which angles must be congruent to satisfy the side angle side posture? Angle, 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 angle. angle N and angle U. <coughs> Okay, all this is is the triangles flipped. It's just flipped over. 
okay? But notice, the angle is located between the two sides. The angle here is between the two sides. Now, at first Josh said this. That is not correct. This angle is between the two sides while this one is completely outside them. Okay, so even though there are two sides and an angle equal to two sides and an angle, they have to be all corresponding to each other. They can't just randomly be thrown about. All right? So the correct would be angle U. And so that's your second way of proving triangles congruent. The third way that we're covering today is the angle side angle postulate. ASA, which states that if two angles and the included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the included side of another, then the triangles are congruent. So it's kind of the same as side angle side, it's just two angles and a side instead of two sides and an angle. But notice the side must be located between the two angles that they are referring to. Wait, what's the, what's the included side? side is located in the middle of the two angles. Okay, This is a non-included side because it's not between the two angles. It must be included between the two angles. This side is included between these two angles. Oh, the little dash? Yeah. Whoa. This side. Okay. Yeah. The dash is representing the side that is congruent. Yeah. So it must be between the angles. Between the angles. Okay? All right, now I want you all to turn in your book to page 123. Um. Ooh. My class of mentally challenged. <laughs> Page 123, number one. Oh, oh my gosh. Page what? Page 123, the instructions say Does the SAS postulate justify that these two angles are congruent? If the tick marks shown and the angles indicated are the ones shown to be congruent, could I say... Yes, ma'am. Gladly. <laughs> That's a really weird point. What time are we around here? 11.30. Oh, oh, I thought it was going to so be a half getting... hour of spanking. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Dead man walking. Oh. Can I get one tomorrow? <laughs> okay. Pay attention to the board. Side angle side. Can you say that these two are congruent through the side angle side posture? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Two sides and an included angle. On number two. Wait, we're on page 123, right? Yes. Right. Oh, yes. Okay. Can you say side angle side? Yes. Yes. All it is is one of them's flipped over. Okay. As long as long as you have two sides and an included angle congruent to two sides.